Hello. Uh, we're back. Um, it's 7.30, I believe now. And we are going to have our devotional. Today we are talking about the dangers of not following God's will. Um, this one was a little tough for us, um, even though we've heard this story many times. <laughs> but still, it was like a different topic that um, we needed help. And we did ask for help. And it's, it's a good thing, a topic to remember how we're going to do decisions. So I think we're going to focus this week about uh, making decisions. And then next week we'll talk more about that. Um, we're going to be talking about um, when God's will is not what you like. So that's going to be for next week. Uh, we're going to start with the word of prayer. Danny. Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Friday you have given us. Thank you for the week that's finally passed us, that we finally have time to rest and start reflecting about your word. Uh, take care of us and that anything we say is coming out of you and not us. And that anybody that needs to hear this gets touched by the Holy Spirit and does hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I think um, this one is really important. I think many of us have, well, many of us have to do decisions, uh, important decisions throughout our lives. And I think, um, well, for me, it's that's something that I struggle with, making decisions. I always go to Danny, I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> Even simple things, what should I eat today, this and that. Uh, but we're going to be talking more about decisions that could affect us and affect our salvation. Uh, so we're going to start reading um, from the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, 6, and 17. And maybe, Danny, you want to read it? Or you? Yeah, yeah. Read it. Okay. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden, there was there the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Okay, so this is um, in the beginning. We've read this story many times of Adam and Eve. And it talks about here, Among the abundant trees of the garden, which were the two most significant trees? And why do you think God pointed these two trees out to Adam? Okay, so one of the trees was the tree of life, mm -hmm. and the other one was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, so those were the two significant trees the that two. God pointed out. Yeah. So why do you think God pointed these two trees out to Adam? The first one, the tree of life, is everlasting life, right? Like, yeah. they needed to take time. They needed to take time. They needed to eat from this tree so that they can live for eternity mm -hmm. but I don't know about the knowledge of good and evil <laughs> yeah so I think um, he gave them um, he had to let them know so imagine if he never told them hey there's these trees that you should be one that you should be eating because to live eternally and one um, sure. be careful because it's gonna actually um, introduce sin into your life so I think he had to tell them even though sometimes um, we might say like why did he put it but if we think about it as a big picture everything was good right yeah, everything perfect. was perfect so only one little thing um, was going to um, cause um, them to sin right one little thing so I think he had to tell them because what if they accidentally ate it one day and like <laughs> hey you never told us this right well it could have been easy too he could have said it behind some bars that they couldn't get through yeah. You know, and like, don't touch this, it's far, like, you can't physically, but I guess what God wanted us is to have the choice mm -hmm. of the perfect world or to expand the world and introduce sin into our I lives. think that's what we're going to be talking about right now. So it says, what was God's will for Adam and Eve? So if we read again in Genesis 2, um, verse 16 and 17, so it says right here, The Lord God gave him this command, you may eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree that gives knowledge about good and evil. If you eat from that tree, down that day you will surely die. So, what was God's will? So, um, we were talking about this and we are saying, well, God's will was for us to live eternally, happy and peaceful. Yeah. But I think He also wanted us to make decisions and have choices. So, He didn't want to just say like, hey, there's only this option. And you don't, this is the only way, right? This is the only option. You don't have any other choice. No, so I think that's what 
made us different. Like God, that's why God made us in His image, and He also gave us that choice um, to give us that liberty and of making like liberty of freedom, like having that decision um, to make for ourselves too. Even though He wanted us to live internally, but He gave us the option. Like He, okay, this is the uh, other choices. And then it says, "What was the first temptation that Satan placed before Eve?" So if you read again, oh, we haven't read this one. Genesis um, chapter 3, verse 1. So what was the first temptation that Satan placed before Eve? The snake was the most clever of all wild animals that the Lord God had made. The snake spoke to the woman and said, Woman, did God really tell you that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Mm. So how does, um, so I guess this says the first temptation was um, he... Causes, it's kind of like a trigger. Yeah, he was like a <laughs> he deceived us, right? He, deceived he made us, yeah. he kind of gave us the truth and also with the lie yeah. to make it look a well, white lie. yeah, like a white lie to make us. I guess it was like to deceive you. So he's saying, "Oh, wouldn't you die?" But not really telling her. Oh, it doesn't mean like you're gonna die right Drop, there in an instant when it. you eat it, but it just meant that she wasn't gonna have eternal life and eventually die. Um, so he didn't want to, he didn't explain everything. So he deceived her, like saying, so I think what I was talking right here, it asked us, what was, oh, what was the first temptation? So I believe the first temptation was disobedience, right? Disobedience, yeah. a doubting God. I think you mentioned that earlier. Well, like how you mentioned about everything being so perfect except one thing. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he made her start thinking about the one thing was mm -hmm. that trick of deception. Mm -hmm. Like, are yeah. you sure you're gonna die? Yeah. Like, you can eat any tree? Like, are you what, sure are you can eat any tree? Yeah, so, so it's like yeah. causing disobedience and also kind of doubting God. Right. And it says, what was the danger Adam and Eve faced as they chose not not to do God's will? Well, they would the lose everything. They would lose, yeah, they pretty would much. Lose the garden, eternal life. Eternal life. Having and that perfect being. Yeah, so God's will originally was for us to have eternal life but if we disobeyed and we chose um otherwise we're gonna have well the consequence was sin, was sin and then um death right sin entering our lives which inevitably allows us to die yeah. okay and then genesis 3 8 says that when they have when they heard the sound of the lord walking in the garden they hid themselves so if we read genesis 3 8 then it was as if their eyes opened and they saw things differently. They saw that they were naked, so they got some fig leaves, sewed them together, and wore them for clothes. During the cool part of the day, the Lord God was walking in the garden. The man and woman heard him, and they hid amongst the trees in the garden. Lord, The Lord God called them, called to the man, and said, Where are you? Mm. So what was the danger God—oh, no, sorry, I read that again. Uh, so Genesis 3 8 he just read it states that they when they heard the sound of the Lord walking into the garden they hid himself so when sin injects its venom what makes us run away from God when sin injects its venom it's what makes it oh I guess the key word here was scared right yeah. call to the man where are you I heard you walking in the garden afraid mm -hmm. he was afraid so he was scared so I think that's, that's a, one of the first things when every time we, so I feel like when, um, like if I sin and I know I did wrong, the first thing we do is try to hide it because we're scared. Even if we think about it, like if I'm a kid and I dissipate my parents, right? We, the right, thing, the right thing to do is like, mom, like, look, I messed up and uh, I, have, I know I have to face the consequence of this, my decision, right? Mm -hmm. But usually... Uh, we choose wrong, right? Sometimes we hide, deny. we deny it, we feel guilty, and we're scared to face the consequences. So I think this is what happened uh, with Adam and Eve. They were scared. Um, the other one is, when we choose not to do God's will and face the consequences of sin, what is the good news about God? So we're talking about making decisions, right? And what are the dangers of not following God's will? But in the end, um, to conclude, this is, this is something beautiful, right? Even though we choose not to do God's will and face the consequences of sin, what is the good news about God? Well, God is always going to be there when we need Him. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we do sin, 
we can always go back and repent to God and God's willing to be there for us and clean out all the sins that we've done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a beautiful thing like God is always reminding us that we're gonna fail many times right we're gonna fall into temptation sometimes not make the great decisions but he doesn't want us just to run away and be scared he's he's always calling us back right, right. I'm open with arms ready to take you back if we um, repent with full repentance right and then um, and we have to we have the option to come back to him so it says right right here number one God's will is for you to live an abundant and eternal life. God did not come to steal your joy, to destroy your life, or make it miserable. God's will for your life is always for you to live an imaginably abundant life. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly, as it says in John 10.10. 10. So how can you experience the fruit of eternal life here on earth? So how can we experience the fruit of eternal life here on earth? I think, you know, the fact of knowing what God is like and how He wants to give us a second chance, He gives mm -hmm. us hope mm -hmm. that when He when the when He comes in the second coming, we have the hope that we can go with Him and live that eternal life that He gave to Adam and Eve. Yeah, I think it's there perfectly, yeah. So I think just um Knowing, like living the, um, living the Ten Commandments, living with God day by day, like he's, um, like you said, it's gonna give us that hope, and that we're gonna have eternal life once God comes, once Jesus comes back. And it says, Satan wants to destroy you. Disobeying God's word leads to the road of misery, suffering, and death. Is there an area in your life where Satan especially wants you, wants to deceive you regarding God's will for your life? So we know God's will is to live internally. Right. And is there an area, so I know this is personal, uh, maybe you're at home watching this, and is, just think about it. Is there an area in your life where Satan especially wants to deceive you regarding God's will for your life? So I guess um, I guess I can give mine up. Mine's is food. Like I love cookies, but we know we shouldn't be eating a lot of cookies, you know. God wants us to have, to be healthy, and even the Bible says that our body is like a temple, right? So we have to take care of it. We have to give it a lot of nutrients. But I'm not going to get those nutrients if I keep eating chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of my weakest strong points. The strong points. Yeah, and everyone has their own um, temptations, right? For me, for sure, it's like I, we were talking about it earlier. For me, it's like um, sometimes we forget to spend time with God. And it has to be daily. And I think those there's always distractions in my head, like, either has to do with something I have to get done for school which now I finish or it has to be work or anything like distractions and then I'm like oh I'll study later I'll study later right. and I think that's something that I mean we all have I'm pretty sure we all have more than just one but sometimes we it's good to reflect on it and just ask and pray for God if you could help us to um, you know to be stronger and to help us um, a, look for a, him that's a good one the, mm -hmm the time wise because yeah. yeah, like even though you think you're like trudging on ahead and like doing life it's kind of true like that could be that could be the satan satan taking away time from us that we can get to god yeah i do like that and then lastly it says we can never hide from god's presence so this one's really important like even though we make bad decisions we failed and uh, we feel like we failed him it says we can never hide from God's presence. It doesn't matter how how far we have run, run away from God because of our sins. His presence is with us even when we have disobeyed His voice. The story of Jacob illustrates this point. He deceived his father and ran away from far away from God. But on the very night, God came to him in a dream. And Jacob said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. So what does this phrase mean to you right now? So I think when um, when I think about this is like reminding us that even um, no matter how far we want to uh, run away, that kind of reminds me of like uh, Jonah when he ran away. He tried to right, but God was always there watching him, um, taking care of him, and also reminding him to come back. Um, and so I think that we could never hide, like that's a, something really important that like, even though we have tried to go away from God as much as possible, He never leaves us, and that His presence is always gonna be there. So I think it's a good um, reflection to always remember 
Now in love, you want to repeat the same three for to remember for this week. So the first one is God's will is for you to live an abundant and eternal life. Number two, Satan wants to destroy you. And number three, we can never hide from God's presence. So I guess to like end it all, um, during the, oh, I guess the story of the week is found in Numbers 22. So you want to write, is that something, a homework? Oh, yeah, so if you have time, I think, <laughs> why you said it all, so you're like, uh. <laughs> I spaced out. So, um, like, if you have time, like this week, um, we're, we want to study this week the story of Balaam. And it's found in Numbers 22. So if you have time, read that chapter and write the lessons you learn about the danger of not doing God's will. So maybe take some notes or in your head reflect, what are the dangers of not doing God's will? And then maybe we could share some next week um, through our uh, little session. So this is a really good thing, like just reminding us that even though um, there is a lot of dangers of not following God's will, right? There's a lot of consequences um, to go through that. But it's also reminding us that even do, even though we run away, um, God always is welcoming us back with open arms. So uh, that's the little uh, message we wanted to share today, um, making life decisions. And I don't know if you wanted to pray or finish with something. Of course. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, time you've given us. Thank you for letting us talk about your word and and being here together and putting it out in the world so other people can see it. Um, take care of us during this week and that everything everything becomes good later on in the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye.